G'day YouTubers and thank you for tuning in to today's about toy review. Today we're going to be taking a look at three Chinese dragons, strategy now, but also two woodwords, which are in a sense in the flip flap origami British wildlife collection toy range. But there's even more strange than that. Let me just go ahead and grab the webcam. Outside is a pest control van, and I didn't expect that vehicle to turn up though. Let me just show you what it looks like. Um, but yes, yeah, it's gonna fly up though, my camera though. If I hold still, maybe then the camera would pretty much not, not fly up though, but there it is there. I can see it. Can you see that white van in the middle there with the red and dark blue logo? It looks like a black logo to me though, but I don't know why there's that pest control van over there though. Can somebody please tell me why is it here though and why is it so so? Uh, maybe it's about to leave. Oh, I can see some sort of fat man there, pretty much working here at the moment though, for the pest control. Um, but yes, I'll probably say that this van could probably be dealing with possibly spiders, maybe rodents, maybe bugs, maybe birds. I guess for for a not so amount of control. I guess he's trying to pretty much control the amount of numbers inside this van, but yes, I don't know what's he up to there, he's basically calling someone, I don't know, maybe there might be another infestation, possibly the next bug infestation, the next rodent infestation, and it looks like he's going in, um, possibly, I don't know, once again, it could be a bird infestation, yes, I'm actually quite curious, could be another spider infestation, I'm pretty sure. I don't know why I'm actually saying those phrases here again, but therefore... Ooh, maybe he's trying to take out some sort of nest. Maybe it could be a dangerous bug. But anyways, without getting distracted by the pest control people, let's just go ahead and take a look at um, these toys here first. Sorry, I've actually been quite late though today because I've only just sent that one hour forward since... Uh, yes, I've got a funny feeling. We're about to lose one hour sleep. So yes, let me just go ahead and show you what we've got. And it's quite amazing, actually. So yes, the first part that we're going to be taking a look at is a flip up origami British Wall of Collection. Common New Asian Coot. Um, how do you say it? Swimming and Feeding Frenzy Flock 12 Pack. I'm not sure if I've done one of those before. It cost about £14.99 or £15. There is the back of the factory. Oh my god, my crockies, what have they done? What have they done to the coot? Why have they ended like a freaking bee mouth? Oh my goodness, man, it looks like he's, he's like he's about to snicker uh, at a fish there. Is that like a, um, a nine-spine stickleback? Oh, I've made a, this style of fish before, though. Crockies, let me just go ahead and practice. It's quite funny seeing... How flip up is like that these days. I'm doing origami birds, which are pretty much in their swimming pose because sadly, continuous stationary is no longer the paper that we use today because of climate change. So we have to focus on paper like that, which is a bummer though because, well, we have to deal with climate change, sadly to say. But yes, the coots, they all look pretty much the same. And if I have a look at the body detailing here, therefore, I'm not sure about you, but they literally look all the same here, even with the, um, you know, the head and the eyes, they all look pretty much the same. But again, noticing how different these coots are, because as soon as you look closely, at the very front, there's actually a white shield at the very front there. Let me just show it to you. That there is a white shield, so if you see that white end, that there is basically a shield. And that's why coots are one of the most aggressive water birds ever, of course, eh? I mean, I'm, I'm not saying as they are aggressive towards humans, but they are aggressive during the breeding season. Like, they are extremely territorial, with major fights breaking up there. Of course, it's quite a very interesting looking bird. And I mean, look at it. It just looks, you know, pretty much the emphasis of what you'll find on a coot. <coughs> you know, these red eyes, 
even the white beak and also the shield at the front and the all black plumage as well you know obviously I can actually compare to one other bird which looks pretty much similar to that and I definitely say the moorhen would pretty much be a very similar looking bird I suppose uh, it looks stunning I mean how could you go wrong with a coot and I think one of the darkest um, thoughts I could actually think of coots is that if the young chicks of a coot keep on begging sadly of course what the parents do is that they would recklessly kick, kill the chicks by pecking at it which in a sense is pretty much extremely well very sad though but that's pretty much what nature can be it can be cruel it can be cool it can be cool in the other way around as well but there you go these are the coots and actually yes um let me just show you what we've got there there is the nine spawn sticklebacks which are basically a species of fish and uh, they've got like red at the bottom there green in the middle blue and of course there's a grey at the back looks quite cool and you've also got another um oh yes that looks quite a nice looking fish eh? it's I believe it's a female because I can tell from the dull colors it's got and there you go it's got like yellow eyes here as well therefore looks looks pretty cool actually and we've also got some bread oh yes I believe that's brown bread could be lightish brown bread actually I suppose it looks pretty nice okay so it looks pretty nice <clears throat> and we've also got is that algae that looks like yeah um actually there's stone warts well I believe stone wart is a type of um, algae I guess but hey you know what it looks pretty fantastic and um, let me just put these guys back in so yes hopefully we're gonna see another half of great British toys but also Chinese toys because of the dragons that we're going to be taking a look at later on in this video and um, yeah so I got a funny feeling oh crocky I feel like I'm going to have a toilet break because I'm about to poop um, I don't know about you but I'll take a break there just a brief break there so I'll be right back there everyone back to the video This is a flip lover origami British Royal Crooks and Common Gadwell Swimming and Feeding Flop Twa Pack. In fact, I've actually made a similar product before though, back in, uh, was it Generation 123 if I remember? Oh yes, it was Generation 123, but this one's a little bit more cheaper, so I'll definitely say this is £1 a lot much more cheaper than the other product that I did there, which was £13. So I think if I remember back then though, when I did the wintering flock of Gadwell, um, yes, I have to say, this one here is going to be quite a different design, so, there's the back of the packaging, which looks like that, and uh, i got a funny feeling, um, I remember the other Gadwell set actually did remind me of Farfetch from Pokemon, but these ones there, 
they're pretty much accustomed to what my design is like. So, yes, and it looks like they're going to be eating sedge leaves. Mmm, yummy. Well, not for the humans, but for the ducks. Because that's what these ducks would love to eat. Sedge leaves. And, yes, they mainly concentrate on all sorts of seeds, plants, and leaves. But let me just go ahead and unpack this product up A and see what's inside. Oh, yeah. Oh, my crikey, look at the gadwells. They look quite small, these ducks. Pretty small-looking ducks now. Looks like they've just... Oh, that's a very weird-looking design. They've actually got their designs a bit differently now. So, hopefully, we're starting to see a very weird um, radical change of what's going on here with the designs, though. So, before we can go into that, let's take a look at the sedge leaves, though. Um, if you don't know what sedge is, sedge is basically a wetland plant and also makes it as a perfect habitat for another bird which also has the name sedge and if I remember it was the sedge warbler um, yes yeah, so I got a funny feeling that these birds would also like to live where wetlands are pretty much present though and my crockies, I just can't believe that yeah it looks pretty cool seeing that though, some sedge leaves, marvellous but anyways, let's take a look at the gadwalls, which are quite nice though, for such a duck though. And um, that's what they've got. This is a female gadwall. It's got like a very weird beak colorization of grey and orange. Very similar to a mallard. In fact, what's even confusing with gadwalls, particularly with the females, they obviously do look like a female mallard. But as soon as you look closely, it looks like they've got more of a greyish tone though. But I think um, if you look at it with a male here, a male gadwell of course, eh, then you have no problem of pretty much spotting the difference between what is a mallard and what is a gadwell. But there you go, this is a mallard. Um, like bird, of course. Sorry if I did say the word mallard though, but this looks very, well, I'll just say it, very similar. It just looks... a you know, it has the, the the emphasis of what you would find in a mallard though, particularly with the head. Although, that being said, this model looks like it's got the head style of a coot or a black-headed gal to me because of the way it's been designed. And also the way, you know, the head's been formed. So, yes, it looks quite nice. And if I look at the wings here, it's got like a white spot instead of a speculum, although I'd probably classify those upper bits there as speculums, the red bits there on top, we also got brown as well, and black, yeah, fancy that, those colours, eh, looking fairly nice, and it feels like that, we've got like, three of the females, and what's also quite funny is, is that there's also a bit of an orange colour combination going on here, so if I might show you, one of the female gadwells, you can actually see there's actually a hint of orange, right over there as well. And also on the other side of the body as well, a hint of orange! Hooray! And we'll take a look at the male gadwells, of course, there's actually two of them that we have. This is actually quite a nice looking set, even though we've got like some sedge leaves, which is probably one of the laziest choices that I've got there, because, well, that's what these ducks would like to, you know, forage for. Uh, but nevertheless, I look quite nice. And I've got a funny feeling, it feels like that, yeah, it feels like that, I don't know about you, it feels quite nice, and actually I should tell you another story on where I found these birds, is I've actually found these at Whitton Lakes, right on top of Aston, and uh, I think the funniest thing was that back then in, uh, I think it was around last week there, but I wonder, on the 19th of March, we actually came across six gadwells, so there were three males and three females, so there were three pairs all together and I saw them uh, swimming together though and I think I've seen those birds before though, but maybe before when I'm doing my first time to some lakes, but yeah, if anything, if I can see these birds common gadwells are quite a nice looking duck to go for, they were an excellent species not as common as mallards but they're pretty much common in Whitton Lakes, I bet I bet they're common elsewhere around the UK, but not as common as mallard. But anyways, I've got a funny feeling this duck species really deserves 
so much credit. Let me just put these guys inside here and see, see what I can have a look at next. Oh yeah. So that's something quite nice. And um, I have a funny feeling that is, that is pretty interesting, I guess. Eh? So, well, looks like my toy view is nearly coming to an end, but I've got a funny feeling that we're going to be finishing off with some dragons. So, out they come. Oh, yes. Out come the dragons. Oh, yes. This is something that we have, would have would have been made for Chinese New Year Day, or the Spring Festival, if you call it in China, though, but... Of course, yes, I actually made these during Wednesday to Friday. Um, but yeah, it's actually was around Thursday, sorry, but... To be quite obviously honest, we've actually got three different stars, three new stars of dragons. One here is basically a jade green female dragon, which looks like that. And if I lay it down perfectly, you can see the whole emphasis of the dragon there, as you can see it's got like blue on the bottom and also on the barbels, I would have said whiskers here you go, pretty much a female looking dragon because she's got a lip of course and some eyelashes and yes her pink colorization keeps on uh, continuing especially on her horns she's got like a dark green looking nose at the front but her overall body colorization is light green, so that looks pretty nice. And if I show you the other side there, that's what it looks like. With the whiskers, or the barbels as I call it. It's like you would find something on a fish. Probably a calf, I guess. But there you go. Uh, the whole dragon continues on. I'm not going to measure these guys until I do feel like I could have some time. I might try and do that in the second video. I might show on the other side. This dragon looks totally cool, eh? Once again, it does look like Mushu from Mulan. And let me try and show you the other dragons that we've got. I've got another one here, which is a blue and orange dragon. I've got a funny feeling that, yes, it looks quite cool. And it's also got like a very cool looking dark green. Uh, is that a goatee? Right over there. Uh, just right at the front. That there. That is why I call it a goatee. Right over there. So, let's move on to the blue and orange one next. We have golden antlers. Or horns. Let me just show you that one next. Okay, so, as I'm laying this blue and orange beast, it actually, whenever I look at this dragon, it looks like it's got a bit of a summer theme into it, though. And, although, with that being said, he looks like he's got a bit of a Wow, very weird city. It looks like a summertime theme. Whenever I think of it, it's got like, well, blue, but he's also got like orange on the whiskers or the barbels, and on the underside as well. And whenever you look at this whole underside thingy, whenever you look at this interesting color combination going on here, it looks like, oh my goodness me, it looks like that you'd find sand. That looks like sand. And on the top of that, of that, Dragon, though, you can see that the colorization is blue. Reminds me of a beach. Reminds me a bit of a summertime sort of theme, though, actually. Though. It could be the sea, could be the sky, could be like, you know, could be a sandy looking dragon, maybe residing in coastal areas where there's water around and not deserts, I guess. But there you go. Looks pretty cool, though. It's got like yellow golden looking antlers though, very funky looking ears in fact all of the dragons have got like very cool funky looking ears and there you go, there's the other side here as well oh yes, that looks it looks pretty nice actually, I'm not gonna lie though so if I look at this carefully it just looks pretty much looks stunning it looks so so nice and you've also got like a very cool looking um dark blue, it looks like it's got a nose there actually, eh? A, a dark blue nose. Would have actually added some more detailing of dark blue though. You know, this similar shade of blue and would have continued throughout the whole dragon on the top though. Would have made it a lot much more better, but anyways, that's got to do. But the other dragon I should take a look at is this um, that looks like a very nice looking pinkish coloured dragon and uh, she looks pretty much interesting because 
If you look at this dragon, not only she almost looks like a hybrid between a Chinese and a Welsh dragon, there's some antlers here, of course. Um, uh, or oh, horns, as you call it, though. They look pretty peach looking. But she looks pretty interesting, because you know why? Even though this dragon looks pretty much, you know, reddish pinkish in terms of colorization, whenever I look at her, she almost looks like another dragon from another franchise. Not a Chinese dragon, but I don't think it's Mushu, I guess. Well, it's like a female version of Mushu, though, but this dragon here actually clearly reminds me, if I have a look at the head here, this dragon head, and also the rest of the whole body here, whenever I look at it, this dragon, obviously, to me, in my opinion, actually reminds me of the dragon from Shrek. You know, the dragon that, you know, that resides with Fiona, and that's what I'm thinking of, right? I can't pretty much go on the emphasis of Shrek even further, or else, you know, well, the internet people are just gonna, you know, they're all gonna get ticked off on thinking, ah, he knows Shrek so much well though. Well, I have known Shrek for quite a while though, but, yes, I've made this because, obviously, yes, um, I've got a funny feeling I must have made this because, not only for the fact that I was Chinese descended though, but I've made this because I just watched someone who was watching um, obviously one of the worst Shrek films I've seen obviously the third one was probably the worst obviously but there you go this is actually quite a nice looking um, interpretation of well it's basically a nice hybrid actually of combining the dragon from Shrek with a Chinese how would you say it um, um, how would you call it aesthetic or or twist actually more like but there you go it looks pretty much nice so we've got three dragons I don't know how much they're going to be selling for but yet again I'm not measuring these guys up until I feel like I'm ready and um, anyways I think that's got to do throughout the rest of this video and there you go I think that's about it the guys though so anyways if you really enjoyed in this pretty rough and ready start to Daylight savings time, in fact we're going up towards summer now, so it's goodbye to winter, and hello spring, and hello summer, and uh, if you really enjoyed it throughout the rest of this whole video on YouTube, please give this video a like, subscribe for more future videos in the future, and for more content as always as usual, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye for now.